So the question came in if I could uh, explain the idea of the interval uh, a little bit clearer. So here's my best attempt at that. So what the intervals are is are basically gathered or created from uh, the unit circle. So if I just quickly draw a unit circle, this is the basis of where all our functions come from. And what we begin to notice is that we had four essential nice points that we kind of mapped to, to our, our graph, uh, our four nice outputs. So the five nice outputs we had are zero, one, uh, zero again, and negative one, and then we also have zero again. Uh, the rest of the numbers aren't going to be as nice. So <clears throat> what we begin to kind of uh, take a look at here is the one thing that I do want to take a look at that if I were to put uh, labels with this, thinking about just geometry in general, and labeling those points as A, B, C, and D, one thing I do want to know to you here is that from A to B, if I were traveling on this circle, I would travel the same distance from A to B that I would from B to C, that I would then from C to D, that I would then do from D back to A. So what I have here is I have four equivalent segment lengths. And this will always be true, okay? This function comes originally from the idea of a circle. And when you map them out on a plane, on a coordinate plane, it's actually telling you a little bit, something a little bit different. So the circle, we're dealing with uh, two particular values, but when I bring it out to here, I'm now talking about what's the distance I traveled. So this axis right here is actually the distance being traveled on the circle. So if I think about this very quickly, here's the normal circle right here. If it's the unit circle, I travel, how far is it that I travel? How, what is the actual distance? Well, the unit circle is nice because if I, if I go, okay, we're looking at the outputs here. If I travel pi over two radian units on the circle, okay, so I start here and I start going pi over two, it puts me right here. Well, that puts me at a height, okay, of one. It also puts me at a marking of zero. So when we talk about cosine, why does cosine uh, start at one? Well, cosine is actually a mapping of how far away your values are from the y-axis. So what is the displacement, displacement from the actual y-axis? Well, we start off at one because if I travel nowhere on the unit circle, I have a displacement of one unit from the y-axis. So what this actually is showing you is it's actually showing you a measurement of displacement. So what I now begin to show is that if I were to graph the original function, okay, at zero units, if I travel nowhere, I'm actually at a displacement of one, okay? And then if I go to pi over two, I have a displacement of zero units from, okay, I have a zero units from the y-axis. Well. Now we can also talk about displacement. Displacement as not just being positive, we can give it direction and we can go negative. So if I go over here to pi, so if I go to pi, I actually have a displacement of negative one units away from the y-axis. And then I come back to the y-axis and then I actually end up on my last cyclical point and I have one. Now the most important thing that I just talked about though is that every single one of these intervals is an equal amount of change. So how many equivalent intervals do I have here? I've got one, two, three, four. So what I need to figure out is I always need to figure out what is the new total length that my cosinal wave is going to take me or I want it to to complete its entire cycle. So when we look at the function, there's one particular value that dictates how quick I want my function to uh, repeat. Where is the repeat? How quick do I want it to repeat? How quick do I want it to happen compared to original? So the original length, it was a length of two pi. The original period took a total of two pi radian measurements. 
Well, this 3x minus pi over 2 is the theta. So this is the only one that can deal with the units you are actually traveling on the circle. This is actually just talking about shifting the circle up. And this one here is actually talking about something a little bit different. But this one is actually going to talk about the total, um, how long I travel on the actual circle. So what we can do is we need to know a couple of things. One, okay, where is my new starting point? Where did I now move the function to where I'm now saying it starts? Well, the original function started at zero, so I altered it from zero. However, the important thing we need to discuss is this idea that I still want to plug a zero in here. So my goal is to find out what is that x going to be so that this whole thing becomes a zero. Why do I want it to be zero? Well, that comes back to the original cosine function. And that comes back to that original periods that I was talking about. The only ones that give me nice outputs are zero, two pi, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two. So essentially what you are trying to find is what are the specific inputs for x that will create zero, two pi, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two, which is why you always have to have those five points because these five are always the five that you want to create. Now, what we need to do, okay, is we need to make that to be zero. So if I want it to be zero, mathematically, we just say it equals that so that it is that. So instead of using, you know, the inequality notation, if that was throwing you for a loop, um, what you can do is we can just start off by finding the original point. So I can say let 3x minus pi over 2 equals zero. This, when I set it equal to zero, will now tell me the very new starting point because here's my alteration. So I'm just going to solve this. So I'm going to take negative pi over 2, put it on the other side. So any equation, if it's negative, I just can make it positive on the opposite side. So I get 3x equals uh, pi over 2. So the last thing I have to do here is to solve for x. Well, you could divide by 3. I'm not a fan of dividing. Uh, I'm actually a fan of always multiplying by the reciprocal. I think in higher order mathematics, most times you're not going to be dividing. You're actually going to be having to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's what I'm in the habit of doing. So the reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. So multiply by 1 third. And what I now have is that x equals this pi over 6. How did I get pi over 6? Pi times 1 is 1, 2 times 3 is 6. So what this now just gave me is my new starting point on my graph. So if I'm on my graph, my new value, if I didn't ever change it, would be pi over 6, 1. Now that's not going to be the case for this graph again, but we're just talking about the intervals. So the one thing I need to know is how long do I want to travel in the circle? What is the actual total measurement of the circle that I want to travel? So what I need to do is I need to figure out, well, now that I have this pi over 6, so I'm going to record this over here because I'm going to erase this. So this is my starting point. So I'm going to call this SP, SP for starting point, just to keep it recorded, get rid of this. The next thing I simply need to figure out is how long is it going to take my function to repeat? Because once I know how long it is, this goes back to the unit circle that I know every single time it's going to be broken into four equal chunks. So a fourth of something is just broken into quarters. Uh, and then I'm just going to multiply that total length by a quarter. Now, what that comes from, again, it comes from inside the theta function. Inside of theta, we have 3x minus pi over 2. Well, minus pi over 2 is only going to affect the shift uh, left or right. So the thing that really affects the, the squeezing or the stretching of the graph is actually the multiplier of x. So the original function was 2 pi. Well, if I want this to happen quicker, I want it to happen in a shorter period. So if it took 2 pi, I want it to happen in a length that's shorter than 2 pi. Well, I want it to happen three times quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 2 pi and I'm going to divide it by 3 because I want it to happen three times. I want, it to happen in, I want it to happen in a third of amount of the time that it originally took. So three times faster means you want it to have it take it a one third of the total time it took before. So two thirds pi, notice, is the total length that I now want it to be. And I talked about that uh, just very quickly in the other video, but I was talking about that as how do I check that I did get calculate the right stuff. Um, so now what I have here 
is the total length, and we can now use this total length. Well, this total length, the interval comes again from this unit circle of all these segments being equivalent. I have four equivalent segments, so I'm going to break this. So now essentially what I'm saying to you is that this is not 2 pi, but this is a length of 2 pi over 3, okay? So if that's a length of 2 pi over 3, well, I want to know how much is each one of these lengths. Well, I simply divide it by 4. Well, dividing by 4, again, I told you I'm not a fan. I'm going to multiply it by a fourth. Dividing by 4 is breaking something into quarters. One fourth is a quarter. So when I take 2 pi over 3 and multiply it by a quarter, what I get is this 2 pi over 12. 2 pi over 12 simplifies to pi over 6. And what I now have is I've now got each step down here. This is a length from here to here of pi over 6. The next length over here, okay, is a length of pi over 6. So I started off at pi over 6, and that these mappings are also going to be the same. So when we go back to the graph, okay, um, that's where we come up with every new step is a pi over 6 distance away from the beginning. So I take pi over 6. So add pi over 6 to pi over 6. So I, now that they're the same, we essentially have 1 and a 1 here. Well, 1 plus 1 is 2, so this is 2 pi over 6. Then add another, you get 3 pi over 6. Add another, you get 4 pi over 6. Add another, you've got 5 pi over 6, which corresponds with, in the other video, the end point. Uh, but you were asking, um, well, the question was just about the intervals. Um, so why is it I'm breaking to a quarter? So I hope I'm answering your question here as to why I'm breaking into quarters uh, with the idea of that unit circle there and those four equal lengths, um, and then the idea of where I need to start. But these are now my new values, and if I want to reduce 2 pi over 6, go ahead if your teacher makes you do it. Um, for my purposes, I could really care less. Um, but 2 pi over 6 is pi over 3, this is pi over 2, uh, 2 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 6. Um, so I hope um, that helps with the idea of what the interval is or where it came from. Again, the starting point was created by taking this initial value, setting it equal to 0, solving for that x, I get pi over 6. This multiplier, okay, you take 2 pi, divide it by whatever this multiplier is, you'll get the total length of the period. Multiply it by a quarter to get the interval. When I multiplied that by a quarter, it just so happened that that was ironically uh, also pi over 6. And then I just... If that's how long it is to the next point, I add it to pi over 6. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, and then 5 pi over 6. And that, that would be it. So I hope that helps. If not, let me know and I'll try to do something else.